Okay, I just wanna go over morning routines. Um, Mr. Oso is the last of the pack to come out. Um, the reason being is that he is the noisiest. Um, he takes the longest to settle down. You can hear the whining. Um, a little tidbit about morning stuff. I typically don't address the dogs in the very first thing. I tend to get myself and the kids kind of going. Um, so, you know, like if by eight o'clock, he's still kind of chilling in the crate while you're um, getting dressed, getting coffee, getting your morning routine done, making sure you are in the, the time and place that you're able to take him out, um, then do that. If you guys, you know, find, so I know, um, eventually one day we're all going to return back to our normal kind of work routine so if you guys have to go into the office um kind of same thing you might just kind of get up and do your own thing first get yourselves ready um before taking him outside for the morning um and then putting him back in the crate if he stays in the crate when you guys are gone um but just don't feel like because he's whining and, and anxious to get out that you have to take care of, of him first thing in the morning. So um, something I learned a long time ago because what ends up happening is you're so tired, you're not fully like awake and present, and then you're trying to take him out and most likely he's going to be amped up to get out of the crate. And that's just going to kind of carry through the rest of the day. So um, what you're bringing out of the crate is what you're going to have in the house. And also if you have to put him away when you guys leave, whatever energy he's at when you guys are putting him away, it's, it's just going to keep carrying and festering basically. So um, how I've managed to keep my dog so calm in the house is by starting in the morning when they come out of the crate. Or like Booma, Booma doesn't sleep in the crate. Uh, she sleeps on her bed, but she stays on her bed until I call her over to me to let her get her water and go outside. Um, so that's just kind of what I'm finding that's working the best. You guys kind of create and cultivate um, the routine that you want, but keep in mind whatever's best to help his state of mind is actually going to be helping you guys long term as well because you're practicing as much calm as possible and it carries over into his adulthood um, and it just becomes habit and routine so less less frustration but dogs are individuals just like people and we all have our off days where sometimes he might just be a little more amped than normal and you just kind of work through it the best you can so i'm going to approach the crate um i typically don't need to have an e-collar or anything on to do this and this is something that we practice from day one um, before he learned any of the tools um, so I do suggest you doing this without tools. This is very much so kind of relational, um, practice, getting him to calm down just based on your guys's, uh, intentions and energy. It's, um, you know, tools are fantastic help, but we don't always need them. Uh, and sometimes we rely a little too heavily. Uh, that being said, if you do find that you need it to kind of help get him more settled a little bit faster, so creating um, down stays, so when you say down and, and you need the help of the e-collar, then you can use it. What you will have to do is set the e-collar up um, the night before. So before he goes to bed, he's going to have it on him. Uh, that way, you know, you don't have to try to get into the crate to put it on him and then try to do this whole process. So have it set up uh, beforehand. Um, and then go from there. Um, and pretty much what you do would be asking for a down stay instead of uh, what we're gonna go through right now. So he's in a down, he's a nice, calm, very calm, relaxed state of mind, finally. Um, after now that all the other dogs are settled, he starts to settle. Definitely feeds off of the energy. Um, so I'm gonna walk up to the crate and the expectation is that he's gonna maintain this calm state of mind and just kind of be relaxed. If he starts to get up and he starts to want to paw at the crate door or lick at the crate door and stuff, I'm just going to back off again. And so this is where, um, this is why time is really important. Making sure you have the time to do this and to practice it as much as possible. So, walk up. Good job. So, and that's fine. 
I'm just gonna turn away. Good job, buddy. But if he was to get up, I'm like that. <laughs> Whoops, sorry, bud. But when he gets up, I just wait. So I got close enough. If he really can't settle down, then I'm gonna back off again and try again. So, so he does this licky thing, but he's definitely getting better at it. Yeah. Um, now I posted a video on Instagram about how to get him dressed. Um, and so you guys can refer back to that. I won't include it in this to make it super long. Um, but that's basically it. And then I just kind of wait, like if he can't, so he's, you can see he's amped up and shaken and ready. Nope. I'll just close the door. I'm just going to wait, wait him out. If I have to, again, I'll close the, the lock it up and I'll walk away. But mornings are tough, right? I mean, he's had all night um, to sit and, and relax and sleep. And so just like kids, they just come, they just wake up fully rested and ready to go. Um, so that being said, the very first energies that we give our dogs in the morning, it's either going to um, keep adding to the already like excited, high energy, highly, you know, uh, recharged dog, or we can kind of just keep them at that level and then from there start draining our dogs. So, um, you know, by doing activities and exercise and um, things that are gonna help bring them to a calmer state of mind. So usually by the end of the day, like dogs around here, um, you know, they go to bed calm. They go, they fall asleep at the end of the night and they're just, they're done, they're good to go. They've had all of their needs met. But in the beginning of the day, it's different. Everything's recharged. So what type of energy you give them in the, in the morning matters. Such a talker. Shh. Hey. I just tend to interrupt that kind of stuff. My little, some kind of a noise. You can snap your fingers or I do, I do the little shh thing. I kind of, nope. Hey. Shh. Yeah, take your time. Obviously, I'm taking a little more time because I'm making a video, but um, typically I would already start the process of trying to put his tools on him. So that's the morning routine. And um, basically this is gonna be the hardest part of the day just because he's fully recharged and ready to go. All right, so another thing to note is that for the first couple of days, if he's really whiny with you guys in the morning, um, as you're trying to get yourselves ready and your son ready, you can put a crate cover on his crate or a blanket or something that's gonna kind of close it off a little bit. Um, that seemed to help him a lot with relaxing in the crates when I'm kind of up in the morning. Um, when I first got him here, I was actually doing that overnight. And I don't cover the entire crate. I leave some uh, open spots in the back against the wall. So he's in a, the crate's in a spot where he can't see anything from the backside. Um, and that's to kind of keep airflow. You don't want it to get stuffy in there. He'll start to get stinky and sweaty and just kind of gross. So um, I make sure there's enough airflow as well with the cover. Um, and then also, if after a little while you guys are finding you don't need him in that down stay in order to get him dressed and he's not, um, pushing at you guys anymore, trying to get out of the crate. Um, he's not all over your hands when you're trying to get his collars and stuff on. Um, then maybe if you, if you open up the door and he's in like a sitting position a little bit back from the door, um, you can try getting him dressed in that position. Um, as long as, again, he's not licking, he's not all over you, he's not trying to push out of the crate. Um, and if you do do it when he's in like a sitting position, uh, make sure you check his e-collar after he's standing because most likely, um, it's gonna not be tight enough. Something about when they're sitting, it seems like it's a tight fit. They stand up and everything's loose. Um, so just kind of double check that as well. Uh, yeah, so that's what you guys have for your crate morning routine. Um, it kind of is similar to the rest of the day, but during the, the beginning of the day is where I find um, the most excitement and the harder or, or more time consuming part of getting dogs out um, than throughout the rest of the day. So if I have to go to the grocery store and then I come back. Yeah, he's amped up, 
but it definitely seems to be a little less because I try to make sure he gets enough outlets throughout the day. So when he does go in the crate for some rest um, and processing, it's not like the overnight where he's sitting for you know a long amount of time um, just resting up. So, um, so anyways, have fun with that. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions.